All right, what's up? We're watching uh, video game theories that will ruin your childhood. I think it's like supposed Gamers to be like creepy. Are a seriously passionate bunch. After spending hours, days, or even weeks playing a single game, some seriously hardcore fans will seek out tiny in-game details left behind by the developers. Anything left unexplained can have a fan base spinning theories that point to a much darker picture. <laughs> what on is screen. that? And disturbingly, not even your favorite childhood games are safe. From Mario's insatiable hunger for souls to people eating Pokemon, it's what? time to shatter the fourth wall and take a dive into a few theories that'll ruin your favorite childhood games. Who are you eating Pokemon? Freaky Fall Guys. When the platform battle royale game Fall Guys was released in 2020, the gaming world quickly fell in love with the battling beans. They raced through a glorified mini golf course, knocking out competitors as they go, all while dressed in a wonderful wardrobe of costumes. But some players noticed that the costumes didn't fit the way they expected. This one, for example, revealed the slim shape of the bean's head through the face opening. Now, most people assume the bodies of these beans fill out their suits, but this indicated that they're actually more stick-like. Hmm. With that in mind, fans started to wonder what was really going on underneath the onesies. Are Fall Guys squishy, stick-like beings that can stretch out of their suits at will? Ew. Or maybe the bulk is made up of extra body parts so that they can crawl out of their face holes like true-to-life nightmares. <laughs> Bro, who's thinking of this weird stuff? <laughs> that was, it turns out that what actually lies beneath the suit is much worse than any fan could have imagined. To one-up the community, the game's senior artist mocked up this flesh-crawling interior oh my view God. of a classic bean. This, this is, is not okay. This needs to stop <laughs> now. The head is suspiciously human, <laughs> but the neck, legs, the and memes. torso are so distorted, it's hard to tell where the humanity ends and where the nightmare begins. <laughs> Nothing about it makes sense. I mean, how does that bent spine support all its weight? How do its hips move without sockets? How does its mouth work inside its body? And don't get me started on those eye stalks. Uh, to make it worse, they also confirmed that the beans are all about six feet tall. Oh, I, I remember that. You, I miss 15 seconds ago when I didn't know this man-sized monstrosity existed. Oh my God. If you want to take your mind off of what you just saw, uh, try doing something unrelated real quick. Oh, I know. You can hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. That's much better. A set of nice, safe, normal buttons that don't look like they're growing out of stock. I respect oh, it. No, now I can't unsee that either. Let's just move on, shall we? Peak anatomy. In 2020, a year where a worldwide pandemic left a lot of. I just want to point out, this is supposed to be video game theories that are ruining your ruin your childhood, and so far we haven't seen any games that are like actually from most people in here's probably childhood unless you're like super young so maybe i don't know maybe this video is made for like younger people i thought it was gonna be like older game maybe it gets older and older as we go through we'll see people craving social interaction one game rose into the limelight not because it connected people but because it let them kill each other in space this is among us a social deduction game released in 2018 where each player completes tasks on a spaceship through their brightly colored astronaut avatar. However, there's an imposter among us, well, them, who kills off crewmates before the tasks are complete. As they fall to the ground though, their bodies expose a single bone at their core. This brilliantly bizarre anatomical feature has led some fans to theorize that these aren't human astronauts. Instead, they're alien creatures that contain just one long bone like a sentient leg mm. of ham. Though not every fan buys into the lone bone theory. Some have pointed out that the characters have little oxygen packs, so they must have a rib cage to support their lungs. But in an update from January 2021, one of the new maps had a small detail pinned to the wall. Lo and behold, it was the lone bone, mm -hmm. hung up like an anatomy chart. And while this is literally the backbone of the internet's understanding of the crewmate's skeleton, the rest of their anatomy is a total mystery. Uh, considering what happened last time fans questioned a <laughs> bean-shaped being's anatomy, I'm happy to leave this unanswered. 
Pokemon problems. Nintendo's oh boy. popular Pokemon game series this is my childhood started here. off as an 8-bit adventure that, over the years, has exploded into a world of vibrant colors and warm characters. But several fans believe this might all be a smokescreen for a world that's actually much, much darker. Mm. For those who've never played, you collect these adorable little monsters and battle them out, ordering attacks that make the opposition Pokemon faint. Although the word faint here is just a very nice way of saying you've beaten them unconscious. That on its own is pretty horrifying when you think about it. Though it's no big deal, you can always heal your own Pokemon at a nearby Pokemon Center. But always might be the wrong word if the infamous Lavender Town scene has anything to go by. In the first generation of internationally released games, Pokemon Red and Blue, you, the player, enter a town that's accompanied by this very sinister tune. I remember this. I actually While remember that. While suppressing your goosebumps, you have to climb Pokemon Tower, yep. a skyscraper packed with hundreds of gravestones, not for humans, but for Pokemon. It's here that you meet your longtime rival, Gary or Blue. He immediately asks you why you're there if none of your Pokemon are dead, which is strange because that would indicate he's there because one of his Pokemon has passed on. In every battle you've had before, he sends out a Rattata that's evolved into a Raticate. But this time, the Raticate in his party is missing. Now, the last battle you had was aboard the SS Anne, a ship without a Pokemon Center on board. In theory, this could mean that after losing the fight on the ship, your rival rushed to the nearest Pokemon Center but was too late to save his Raticate. Rip. Wait, does this make you a Pokemon killer? Uh, this theory is pretty Murder. upsetting, to say the least. Almost as upsetting as burying hundreds of Pokemon in a skyscraper. So creepy. But it's not the only disturbing detail in the first generation of Pokemon <laughs> I never thought about how creepy this is. Oh my god. I guess you never Most just really think about Pokemon. it until someone in Vermilion brings it up. City, the Pokemon Gym Battleground is run by the military-mad Lieutenant Surge. When you approach him, he makes a one-off comment that electric Pokemon saved him during the war, and that they zapped his enemies into paralysis. Sounds like something your crazy uncle would blurt out at Christmas. But hold up, this means that Pokemon were once used sure. as weapons in an actual war, and Lieutenant Surge is only middle-aged, if his hairdo and high-waist trousers are anything to go by. So it must have been a fairly recent war at that. This would indicate that the Pokemon games are set in a post-war world, where the Kanto region suffered a huge number of casualties. It'd go a long way to explaining why there's so many Pokemon centers and a lack of older male characters throughout the game. This might be why your character only has a mother and no father, and why there's no mention of your rival's parents at any point in the game. In order to wipe out an entire generation of adult Pokemon users, the theory follows that this war must have been huge. Although it's unclear who the enemy was. Another region, perhaps? Maybe an untamable legendary Pokemon? And while Nintendo has kept quiet about this mysterious conflict, I wonder if they've got plans to release a game that'll let you play as part of the Pokemon War. I mean, how cool would a Pokemon Maybe. crossover with games like Call of Duty or Battlefield be? Pikachu, I choose you. Hit the enemy with Thundershock. Yeah, great job, Pikachu. Now teabag him. <laughs> Coughing fit. While you can find many Pokemon in the wild, not all of them are natural. Porygon, for example, is a first-generation Pokemon made entirely out of computer code, proving Pokemon can be created artificially. And with that said, what happens when these artificial creations go wrong? Well, one theory has an answer in the form of the poison Pokemon, Coughing. This happy ball of toxic gas is a favorite of the evil Team Rocket throughout the original games. But this bunch of thieves would be much better suited to ghost-type Pokemon, seeing as they can slip through walls, disappear instantly, and really frighten their victims. There are only three ghost Pokemon in the original games, though. Ghastly, Haunter, and Gengar. And they're not easy to catch. Unable to get their hands on them, what if Team Rocket had attempted to create their own ghost-type Pokemon? By genetically engineering gas particles from poison Pokemon and forcing them into bulging balloon constructs similar to ghastly shape, 
They brought this floating, coughing creature to life. It clearly worked at first, but when they tried to evolve their creation into a haunter shape, their plan went sideways. Instead of growing a set of hands like haunter, the resulting wheezing grew more heads. The smile of this tumor-ridden horror was replaced by a look of constant pain and misery. And, as its name Jesus. suggests, it was even struggling to breathe. Faced with the menacing monstrosity they created, Team Rocket admins abandoned the project and gave the poor Pokemon to their grunts to use as cannon fodder. That theory's so evil, I wouldn't put it past Team Rocket to try. A ghostly relation. It's no secret that all Pokemon are identified a lot of Pokemon by in this elemental video. properties, ranging from fire and water to dragon and steel. But it's ghost Pokemon that stand out as some of the oddish, uh, sorry, oddest. Because if the three original ghost Pokemon, Ghastly, Hauntar, and Gengar, really are ghosts, then uh, what Pokemon are they ghosts of? One theory argues that the answer is lurking on the other end of the spectrum, in the realms of the original fairy Pokemon. Fairy types are a mystery, mm. with moves and abilities more magical than any other. While little is known about them, there's a striking similarity between the fairy Pokemon Clefable and the ghost Pokemon Gengar. From their pointy ears, stubby limbs, and the ears are a bit hands, different. Their silhouettes Not the ears, are I mean the tails. unnervingly similar. But Not they are only pretty that, similar. But Gengar is also known as the Shadow Pokemon. A shadow of what? Well, when you flip it around like this. Oh, wow. Coincidence? I think not! Could this mean that Gengar is the dark spirit of a very sweet but very dead Clefable? Well, That's a so, good guess. What about That's a really good Pokemon guess. Before Clefable's evolution, do they also have ghost type counterparts? Upsettingly, the theory follows that the adorably tiny, ball like Cleffa perishes into the ghostly sphere of Ghastly, and the cute eared Clefairy is trapped in the form of Haunter. What kind of dreadful end did these poor Pokemon meet for their souls to be trapped? like this? Well, I have another theory, but I don't think you're going to be able to uh, stomach it. Soylent Green is Pokemon. Since the Pokemon games debuted, fans Wait, all what? over the world have wondered if normal animals exist in its universe. If they don't, then what do the people there eat? This isn't really addressed in the earlier games, though in Pokemon Sword and Shield, you can cook up a delicious range of curries and share them with your Pokemon. And these all seem innocent enough until you cook up a sausage curry. There hasn't been any mention of regular old pigs in this universe at all. So are those sausages made from pork or pork iman? Uh, <laughs> perhaps I'm overthinking this. Maybe they're just good a question. good looking vegetarian alternative. Though Maybe. it's hard to rationalize how bluntly named bone curry could be made without any kind of meat. Uh... Maybe normal animals do exist in this universe. I don't then. remember we ever seeing normal seen animals in ever. any Pokemon I mean, game. Yeah, developers never. Developers at Nintendo wouldn't be sadistic enough to make you eat the creatures you've befriended in this game, would they? Maybe not in the international versions, but in the Japanese release, they made no secret of the main ingredient in this depressing dish. I mean, that iconic claw definitely belongs to the crab Pokemon Kingler. <laughs> Well, it is a Nintendo crab, so I guess that makes sense. Officially confirmed, people eat Pokemon in game, but for one horrifying moment, let's work on the assumption that they do. Would the farming process work like normal, where battery farms raise and breed Pokemon as livestock? Maybe certain Pokemon species, like those close to cows and pigs, are I feel bred like that would to probably make the most sense. What if after they've been uh, harvested? Farmers save on the costs of raising new Pokemon and restore them through Pokemon Center technology. That would mean that they go through the entire gut-wrenching harvesting process every time someone starts craving steak, seafood, or sausages. Even though this is just a theory, I've suddenly lost my appetite. Still Alive The physics-defying video game Portal is a puzzle lover's dream, no matter their age. It starts off innocently enough where you play as a test subject in a research facility with access to a shiny new Portal gun. After ripping holes in reality to solve a series of innocuous challenges, the story takes a turn for the worse. The spotlight shifts onto the homicidal villain Gladys, a rogue AI who has a love of testing and a hatred of you. But before she goes completely haywire, she introduces you to companion cubes, 
These weighted boxes help you complete some of the more complex tasks that would otherwise require you to be in two places at once. What's inside them is never revealed, but when you're instructed to incinerate this cube, you unlock an achievement called Fratricide. That's the act of slaying your brother or sister. Almost like the cube was alive. And what? that's not all. During one test sequence, Gladys lets slip a vital hint. I think that one was about to say, I love you. They are sentient, of course. We just have a lot of them. You heard that right. The cubes are sentient and can talk. That means there might be actual humans trapped inside them. In-game, Gladys has no regard for human life, so it's not too far-fetched to assume she'd force the player to unwittingly kill someone just to antagonize them. Oh. A captivating design. To the unassuming eye, Portal's maniacal, mechanical villain hanging from the ceiling looks like the furthest thing from a human. However, a developer's commentary of the game revealed that Gladys's arm was actually inspired by human traits. She was originally going to have a floating brain or resemble Botticelli's Rise of Venus, made out of mechanical parts. Eventually, they settled on this sleek, curved design to make her look fatally feminine. They were so successful in this, though, one fan believed they could actually see the shape of a woman in the arm's outline. It wasn't Botticelli's Venus, though, but a woman that had been bound and strung up from the ceiling by her feet. The two forms certainly look similar, and considering Gladys's madness is restricted to the facility, the bound form gives the shape of the villain a lot more meaning. Maybe the developers couldn't admit this sort of risque influence in the commentary, so kept it out of the description? Uh, it sounds pretty unlikely, but even so, I'm definitely going to have a hard time unseeing. Oh, no, this one kind of seems more like a reach to me. Sonic's Shoes When Nintendo released Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020, fans noticed something strange about the surfing event. While Mario got to ride his board barefoot like a regular person, Sonic still sported his sneakers. I don't think this Sonic's ever taken his shoes off. Why Sega's favorite blue hedgehog was never seen in any game without his trademark red running shoes. Although the better question here might be, what are his shoes hiding? Does Sonic have little clawed paws like a hedgehog? Mm -hmm. Maybe they're as equally large as his hands, or perhaps he has fully formed four-toed feet. Oh god, I wish I'd never ask. It's a question that's haunted Sonic fans for almost 30 years, thanks to the inconsistencies in comics and animations from the 1990s. While one cartoon shows he has little blue paws, another no, one right a here. pale footed, three toed creature, and a separate comic strip displayed some freakish like regular human feet. feet. Yep. So, what's the truth? According to Sonic the Hedgehog game producer Takashi Izuka, Sonic just never takes his shoes off in canon. Frankly, this leaves me with more questions than I started with. Maybe the answer can be found in other characters that don't remove their shoes, like Kirby. This cute little pink blob is a Nintendo creation who sports similar red shoes to Sonic. But just like Sonic, Kirby's creator refuses to divulge what his feet look like beneath. Well, some believe they're smooth pink blobs like his arms, others Probably. theorize that to be able to run and walk as he does, there are five-toed feet hidden. Oh my god. Him. Does anyone have any bleach? I don't I need it for my eyes. <laughs> yeah. I wish I could didn't I, I want to see that. Secret. Kirby is an innocent series of action platform games that are as adorable as they are wholesome. That is, except for one. Kirby 64 The Crystal Shards. This was the first Kirby game to boast 3D graphics, which gave fans a good look at the worlds Kirby could play on. Too good, it turned out. One of the available worlds, called Shiver Star, featured a geography similar to Earth's. All seven continents were clearly visible, but obscured by a cold, foggy haze. When Kirby visits the planet, you can see the terrain is also similar to Earth's, though most of it is covered in several feet of snow. But this isn't set during the Ice Age. As the game progresses, the player bumbles through factories and shopping malls tended by malfunctioning robots. But why are all the robots malfunctioning? Where are all the humans? And why is there a massive robotic boss at the end decked out in an army's worth of missiles and lasers? According to one theory, Shiver Star is actually a version of Earth trapped in a nuclear winter. 
Following a nuclear winter, the ash from immense fires got trapped in the atmosphere, blocking out the sun and freezing That would make sense since there's like robots core. and stuff. The humans that Somebody had to make the them. deadly radiation were killed off by the sub-zero temperatures, leaving the factories, malls, and robots to gather dust. This means Kirby might be rolling around a post-apocalyptic landscape bouncing through dust that used to be billions of people. And I thought his feet were bad. Malevolent Mario. Malevolent Unless Mario. you've been living under a rock, you probably know the story of this red-capped, mustachioed plumber. In Super Mario World, Mario has to save Princess Peach from Bowser, the evil king of the Koopa, who rules over the Mushroom Kingdom. Along the way, different items lend Mario the power to smash through Bowser's minions. But as heroic as he appears, the Fire Flower power-up has sparked a fan theory that's hard to ignore. Unlike other attacks, hitting an enemy with a fireball produces a coin. Now, why would burning an enemy to a crisp reward you with money? Well, this theory claims that the coins aren't made of gold, but of souls. Like an 8-bit cremation, burning up the bodies releases the souls, whereas hmm. bopping or crushing a minion doesn't destroy the vessel completely. And what's more, collecting 100 of these soul coins grants Mario an extra life, like a soulless exchange for immortality. But if that's all true, why are there so many coins concealed in bricks and blocks? Well, in the original Super Mario Brothers instruction, Instruction manual, it says that the peace-loving mushroom people like the character Toad were turned to stones and bricks by the Koopa. Wow. So by headbutting the bricks, you could be shattering one of Toad's cousins and claiming Yo. your soul for yourself. Anyone else Did not know that. guilty all of a sudden? Behind oh my the mask, god, look at Link. Majora's Mask is one of the bleakest games in the iconic Legend of Zelda series, but there's a chance it's much darker than anyone first thought. In the game, our protagonist Link discovers he's lost his friend Navi. His quest to find her becomes so troubled that one popular fan theory claims the game actually guides Link and the player through the five stages of grief. These are denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. Clock Town represents denial, where despite the menacing moon threatening to end the I world, hated that moon. the townsfolk continue to plan their upcoming festival. And then there's the Deku King, representing anger, who's blinded by rage at the disappearance of his daughter. After that, even though Darmani is dead and has become a ghost, he embodies bargaining by trying to strike a deal to return to the land of the living. Then maybe saddest of all, Lulu speechlessly displays depression after losing her eggs. And finally, Link's acceptance culminates in his ascension through the Stone Temple, where he literally becomes enlightened through his discovery of the Light Arrows. It almost makes you feel bad for enjoying the game. With representation of grief packed into every pixel, other theories have pointed out that Link might not be grieving over Navi, but is actually struggling to accept his own death. At the beginning of the game, Link chases the elusive Skull Kid and falls down a deep hole, accompanied by an impossible stream of visions before landing unharmed. He could be dead. But one he could fan be dead. pointed out, there's no way he could have survived such a long fall, let alone land without a scratch. The rest of the game serves as a quest for him to come to terms with his own deadly demise before oh, his soul passes on to the afterlife. And that's pretty heartbreaking. Dungeon Disaster before Hyrule's hero was given his piercing blue eyes or recognizable blonde mop, he existed as this blocky character in the original Legend this. of Zelda video game from 1986. This 8-bit adventure saw the now famous protagonist battle to save Princess Zelda from the evil wizard Ganon by scouring dungeons in search of pieces of the mystical Triforce. Each dungeon was a unique labyrinth of rooms guarded by monsters, but the third dungeon turned out to be the worst by far. Not not because it was tough, but because a top-down version of the map resembled a, um, shall we say, freakishly fascist design. This discovery immediately led to rumors oh, wow. and theories that there were fascist employees working for Nintendo, and that the game was actively advocating fascism. After all, Link does go around killing everything in the land that doesn't look like him, and to make it worse, later iterations of the character were given fascist favorite features like blonde hair and blue eyes. Oh boy. Nintendo rushed to reveal that this was actually designed after a manji, an ancient oh, Buddhist okay. symbol promoting peace, unlike the horrendous hate symbol people had mistaken it for. They're just very so similar. It was okay. all just an innocent error in Makes sense. and thankfully not the world's worst recruitment drive. Makes sense.
Well, which of these games have been ruined for you forever? Well, I mean, I thought it was going to be creepier. I feel like it was more like more disturbing than like dark and creepy. But, uh, you know, maybe we'll check out something more of the dark side next time. I enjoyed this video, though. A little bit too I, I love Pokemon, but I wish they would have covered a little bit more in there. There's like a lot, of, like a huge section dedicated to Pokemon where it almost felt like it was its own video. But other than that, I really enjoyed it. And uh, what do you guys think we should check out next? Let me know what you thought about these disturbing uh, <laughs> uh, game theories. And if they ruined any of your childhoods, make sure you leave a like, sub, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.